Hello there. Um, my name is Simon Farnaby, author of The Wizard in My Shed, The Misadventures of Murder in the Wild, and I'm very excited to read a little bit for you today to whet your appetite. Um, so, uh, in the first chapter you meet Murder in the Wild, who is a warlock, and he's a very naughty warlock, and he's in a trial and he's been sentenced to seven years in purgatory or hell. But his arch enemy has cleverly um, manipulated the spell and has sent him through the rivers of time instead of the rivers of purgatory. So he ends up in modern day Bashingford uh, near London, just off the M3. Um, and he runs into the woods screaming at the aeroplanes and the cars and all the noise and the pollution. Um, so we leave him in the woods, then we meet Rose, who is a little girl who wants to uh, be a singer um, and but nobody thinks she can do it most of all her mom and her brother so she takes her beloved guinea pig bubbles and she runs away to make a fortune in Paris and in the woods she bumps into a very strange creature indeed a hand shot out and grabbed her wrist it was a grubby filthy hand with dirty fingernails it was like something from Dawn of the Dead or Night of the Dead or one of the many other such films with dead in the title that her brother Chris liked to show her to give her nightmares. Rose screamed, ah, 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 ah. Given the circumstances, Bubbles would ordinarily have pooed himself again, but it had been a very scary day and he had no poos left to poo. Child, shouted the cloth creature in a low, gruff man's voice, I mean of thou no harm. He released Rose's wrist and held both hands up in the universal I meaneth thou no harm gesture. Rose backed away. Who, who are you? She said. What do you want? At this point, Rose noticed the man's shoes. They were very peculiar moccasin type things with layers and layers of strapping that went all the way to his knees. His trousers were cowhide or leather. He wore a cloak of multicoloured rags. He raised his arm slowly and stepped into a ray of moonlight that was now poking through the trees. He had a long scraggly beard and matted hair with silver bits in it. His hat was pointy on top and floppy at the sides and black? Purple? It was hard to tell. It looked like it had never been washed. My name is Murdin, said the strange man. This land, it be purgatory. What does purgatory mean? asked Rose. Tis another word for hell. <laughs> Rose blurted out a nervous laugh. Yeah, you're in the right place. But uh, we call it Bashingford. Murdin tilted his head in a perplexed fashion, much like a dog does when trying to understand a basic command. Bashingford, he said slowly, stressing each sound like it was a foreign word. Um, where are you from? she asked. I did come through the rivers, he said, a hint of sadness in his voice, sent here against my will. But then, who goeth willingly to hell? Well, yes, most people come here against their will, mused Rose, uh, relocating from London mainly. A lot of businesses find it cheaper to, uh, but Murdin's eyes started to glaze over as she talked. He was looking at something. What was it? Rose stopped talking and tried to follow his blue-eyed gaze. He was staring at Bubbles. Murdin licked his lips. Mm, thou hast belly timber. Mm, he said. Belly what? said Rose. Belly timber, Murdin repeated impatiently. Food! I am very hungry. He snatched the guinea pig out of her arms. Build a fire while I killeth it. We can have it with parsley and sage. He was about to dash Bubbles' head against a tree when Rose grabbed the traumatised animal back and pulled it to her chest. This is my pet, she shrieked. His name's Bubbles. You can't eat him. <sighs> Fine said Murdin, irritated. Then take me to thy lodgings. We will feasteth there. I shall taketh refuge with thee while I endeavoureth to escape this dread place and get back home. Um, excuse me, you're not staying at my house, said Rose, alarmed. I don't even know you. Worry not, little one. I have monies, much monies. He dived into a pouch around his belt and flung some dirty-looking stones at Rose. They looked like pebbles? Right, said Rose, for a start, that isn't money. And for a finish, she wasn't sure where to finish. Look, 
I wish I could help you, but I've got problems of my own, okay? So, goodbye.